Welcome to another bonus segment of Get Geeky with Kiki. Today is a quick film review where I'm joined by my Mission Spooky hosts, Cord and JC, as we attempt to entertain you by tackling three different films in 30 minutes or less. Welcome. Sorry. <laughs> I chugged a root beer. That's <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to Chugging Root Beer with Cord. <laughs> New podcast. New podcast. Why not? Are you saying we're going to have a root beer cast now? Root cast. I'm Kiki, your host, and with me today, the two best guys in the whole universe, fight me about it, Cord and JC. Oh, I thought you were going to say like Kevin McConaughey and Ron Swanson. <laughs> that would have made a lot more sense. One of those people's real and one of them is They're both not. real to me. Hey, I got a funny thing that happened this week that is very much related to the title of this podcast because we we will eventually talk about D and D at some point. But <laughs> we'll get to it eventually. I promise. It's on the to do list. We're saving some stuff. We got something big going on over at Mission Spooky that actually ties in with D and D. So, oh uh, yes, we do. Yes, we do. So we're going to be working on that first, and we're working on it um, with some other TTRPG podcasts so i'm really excited about that here's my funny story so this is going to run a little bit longer but for those of you who know lindorm dice and you should by now if you're any kind of uh dice whore like i am uh, or just you know sometimes people just call me the whore but anyway um Whoa. i go over to lindorm dice they're having a big easter sale and the idea is and i love the idea if you find the easter egg the literal easter egg on their website you get a code and then you can put the code in and then you get something special when you check out now i have backed them for the norse saga dice that was last year so those are on the way here and i will review those just because i will i missed the very first part of the norse saga dice so when i logged on the other day and found out that the loki dice were available like in the shop i was like holy crap yes 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 then they're having a huge spring sale so i think my total was like 46 dollars, including shipping and so i'm like oh i wonder what i'm gonna get off i'm figuring i'm gonna get a percentage off so i type in the code and it gave me everything almost 100 percent free it was i think it was coming down to like it looked like i was only paying a dollar for each set of dice wow good job i know i thought i hit the fucking jackpot i was like hell yeah <laughs> oh my god this is great wow right wow lindorm and i even said i was like thank you lindorm dice this is so awesome like i'm so excited like i can't believe that you're doing this this is nuts right so my husband he was here and then later on he was like, oh, let me check it out because they had the they have new druid dice and they have new paladin dice and they're going to be running all of the classes. So they have like, I think, five out now. So he's like, oh, you know, what? oh, bard. He's like, I'm going to get the bard ones and I'm going to get the druid ones. I'm like, sweet. So he finds the egg and, and I'm assuming at this point that maybe it generates a different code. I don't know. So he types his code in and guess what? He's getting everything for free, too. And I thought, um, something's not right. <laughs> <laughs> that is a lot of brand new dice to be giving away for like a dollar i mean he put his order in he's like i'm just let's just see what happens i'm like yeah i think we're probably gonna get an email pretty soon from lindorm and it's like there's been a horrible mistake yeah there was there was a horrible mistake so yeah it, the code <laughs> was accidentally giving away all of the dice for only a dollar oh wow yeah oops so i got my email and it was supposed to give you a free random set of dice with your order. And I did the math on this and I and I I perhaps I'm making the assumption based on the fact that I have backed them before and they do have my name and address in the system. But they gave me a really good deal. So I I paid for the Loki dice full price, which is fine because they're gorgeous and they're brand new. But the two dice sets that were on sale, I actually wound up getting those for free. So that was that was really, really sweet of them. And I love Lindorm. They're in Sweden. Please go check them out. It's just lindormdice.com. Give them some love because, man, they spent all night trying to fix that and make people happy and make people understand that we obviously can't be giving away like, you know, $22 sets of dice for free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a that's a bit of a hit. Yeah. Do you have a link to that dice page? I want to look at these. Yes, I can. I can give that to you. All right. Who wants to go first? So so this week we did... um. Well, we called it D-list superhero movies, but really what we were going for was the superhero movies that are not Marvel, DC, any of those guys. We, we wanted the theme of superheroes, but without having the big comic book Iron Man. Yeah. 
yeah. Iron Man, all that crap. Thor's not making an appearance in these movies. No, <laughs> no, he is not. I well, <laughs> ironically, the one that I chose. Well, God damn it! It's interesting how they wound up getting in there anyway. <laughs> <sighs> It was kind of funny. So, Cord, you chose Muga Moody. Yes. It's an Indian film. Yes. And JC did Freaks. Yes. And I chose Unknown Origins, which is a Spanish film. So who wants to go first? Yo, they got small frog dice. <laughs> I was looking at I was looking at the mushroom dice. I was like, Those look yes. pretty cool too. I like the Those pink. Are awesome. I vote JC goes first. Okay. That's what happens when we uh they got a little koi fish one. Oh, oh the koi. That's fucking baller. The koi fish dice are freaking awesome. Yo, panda, panda dice? I will own those at some point. Basically, this part of the podcast has just become a free advertisement for Lindorm, but they're... Panda dice. The fucking bomb, so... They got panda green dice? And, and they got pandas panda. in it. Anyway, JC. <laughs> yeah, JC, you should Wait, go first. Wait, I'm looking for these fucking panda dice. <laughs> Wait, am I allowed to curse on this podcast? I don't think anyone really gives a fuck. Oh, okay. You don't have to worry because Panda Dice are out of stock. You can look for them all day yet tomorrow. Just tell me this movie. All right. So uh, let me let me pull up the IMDb so I can um, <laughs> remember people's names. Because I'm bad at that. Okay. So I watched Freaks, which is currently on uh, Netflix to watch. It's a good movie. Let's just start there. It's directed by Zach Limfowski, Limfowski and Adam B. Stein. They're also the writers. And the story follows a little girl played by Lexi Cloaker. I'm probably fucking up these names. She plays a girl named Chloe. And it's very weird because it's all shot kind of from her perspective or point of view. She's the main character and she's only supposed to be, I think, seven in the movie. So a lot of it's like you're not seeing a full picture of what's going on. Well, you're only seeing things from her point of view. There's no kind of about it. There's a lot to the world and world building that they do by dropping subtle hints that if you pay attention, you'll you'll pick up. I watched the movie twice. And I enjoyed it both times. Chloe, you find out she has powers. And this world, they call the people with powers abnormals or freaks. Hence the title of the show. Freaks is like the derogatory term. And they're trying not to like give too much away because we're supposed to be doing spoiler free. Chloe starts having visions of people who aren't currently in her life. And you find out that other people near her in the story also have powers and they're trying to use Chloe. Each generation of abnormal is stronger than the previous. So she's only seven and she has pretty awesome powers that she's just figuring out and messing with. My favorite character was Grandpa, played by uh, Bruce Dern. Oh, yeah. He's he's a great actor. Love Bruce. He has a face that you you see and he you just like he has like if he grows that short beard out, he just looks so like angry. He looks like he could just be any old angry guy on the street. And he just does a great job of playing kind of an everyman. He did a fantastic job in this movie he was definitely my my favorite character lexi cloaker did a good job at playing chloe i mean it's it's a child role all the acting was very good some of the the superpowers weren't explained very well and i kind of like start punching holes in that when i start thinking about them but if you don't think too much it's fine you're also only seeing things from the point of view of a seven-year-old, so you're not supposed to understand every power that you see in the movie. There's a government agency. Basically, their job is to hunt down and eradicate abnormals. They are the bad guys in this that Chloe does not understand why they're bad. She doesn't understand like that she's different. And a lot of the story is actually her just realizing like or trying to want to be a normal person and a normal child and not be able to because she can't leave her home uh, without the threat of death. 
but I give it um, what's our rating scale? Just A B C D. Oh, A B C D E F. Yeah, how how does one of us forget this every time? <laughs> <laughs> um i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a uh, uh, b plus it was very enjoyable i recommend it other than like some possible holes and powers i have no issue with anything that happens in this movie the stories it's not super original but it's an original take on on a story which is why it's not an a but it, right. it was great all the acting was great it seems like an interesting perspective to take. Yeah, it definitely was. Because, yeah, it's from a, the point of view of a seven-year-old. You got me interested. I, I might watch this soon. Yeah, it's good. It's, <laughs> it's, it's pretty dark, too. It's definitely not like a, a happy, fun movie that you want to watch with kids. This is not like that. But it, it is definitely, a, I mean, there's quite a lot of death. But, yeah, it, it's, it's good. Cool. B+. Plus. I think that's the highest rating I've given. Yeah. No. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Maybe. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. We did a lot of these already, so <laughs> maybe. <laughs> you guys usually question my grading scale because it's like I hate this movie. I give it a B. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, your your grading scale is pretty garbage. But <laughs> this is why I'm not a teacher. <laughs> Give him an F. <laughs> <laughs> but he had all the answers right. Give him an F. I don't like the sound of his voice. <laughs> he fails because he stinks. <laughs> this is a class on how to smell good. Mm -hmm. so this is a math class. <laughs> all right, so all who's right. going next? I think with it, that we should end on Mooga Moody because I know that uh, Cord is like super excited about this film. Yeah. I'm excited about all the movies I had to watch. I like every movie I watched so far. So far, me too. I've been. I can't wait to talk about the other ones for like <laughs> the weeks after that. We, should, you know. I'm so excited for the other two I watched with this one. <laughs> oh yeah, sorry guys, sorry we missed a week. We did put out a special Wandavision with me doing the Rune thing. That was sort of a crossover. Oh, Wandavision was so great, BT. Dude, Dubs. it was just, amazing. Just want to mention that. Yeah. Don't say anything. Yeah. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do mine then so we can save save the best 40 for last. Poo for last, yeah. Yay. All right, so I chose the 2020 film called Unknown Origins, which is a Spanish film. You know, I didn't check to see if this had subtitles. I just listened to it with a dub over, I believe. Although, honestly, I could probably make out most of it in Spanish. But anyway. Ooh, look at you being yeah, well, bilingual. Ooh. Yeah, if I listen to it, I can figure out most of it. So the year is 2019, though, in the film. You're in Madrid. There is a serial killer on the loose. People are dying that seemingly have no connection to each other. Everything about their death so imitates first appearances of famous superheroes. Wait, what? Yeah. Their death imitates the first appearance of a major superhero. Okay. Yeah. For, for example, the Hulk is one of them. There is a detective who is up and coming, young guy. And you've got a detective who is retiring. Classic cop buddy movie until somebody finally puts the pieces together that this has to do with comic books. Well, the detective who is about to retire has a son who owns a comic book shop. And they basically, in not so many words, deputize the kid in order for him to be put on job with this detective who's the up and coming young guy. And he finally gets to quote unquote contribute something because, you know, dad's this like super awesome detective. His brother was involved in, I don't want to give anything away about that. He's finally getting to show that knowing something about comics is going to help society in some way by solving this murder. And in the process though, and this is, this is the cool part about this movie in the process of this happening, a new superhero is created. Your director is uh, David Galindo, and you've got Javier Ray, Veronica Cheji, and uh, Bryce Efe. Bryce plays the younger guy who is the comic book nerd, and Veronica plays the <laughs> she plays the head of the police station, <laughs> and she's a cosplayer. Absolutely hysterical. This woman is. I love her so much. I love her just for this movie alone. She's called on to the scene of a crime the first time you see her. And I, I can't remember. I think she was dressed up as Sailor Moon. I <laughs> was dying. I'm like, that 
is some funny shit. Yeah, it was fun. I would say it's a sweet movie. The ending was really good. It didn't go on for too long. How the new hero is created is very cool. Those of us who are already comic book people, we catch on to the story like really fast, but that's fine because so does the kid who's the comic book collector. So you're kind of like right there with him the whole time. Really well done. I would say I give it a give it a B minus. I don't know. I haven't figured out my own rating system yet. I feel like it's a B minus because some of it was predictable. Yeah, but it's it's worth seeing. It's it's not I don't feel like it's C material though. But it's not up there as like, you know, quite A either. Okay. Yeah. And what what's that on? It's on Netflix. Okay. And actually I, I did look up after I watched the movie. I wanted to know what people thought about it. And there's that um the website you can go to. So is it do, you know to stream or not to stream something like that and it did come in at a solid like six or seven out of ten and yes you should watch it so i was like oh good because i enjoyed it i thought it was really cute all right cord i did a little bit of homework on this before did homework on Mooga moody i did i watched the full trailer of it so i would understand exactly what it was about before you would start talking about it so go for it oh I'm man excited. This okay. Before you do this, can I watch the trailer? That way I have the information. Why is there a clown blowing bubbles? We'll get into it. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get into it. Really, we might not get into it. But <laughs> that was a great answer to that. We'll get into it. <laughs> So we'll do a deep dive on the clown. No. <laughs> All right. I'm ready for your review. So let's begin. So Muga Moody uh, released in 2012. It's an Indian film. I think this might have been the first foreign film I ever watched, like actively sought out and watched because I remember this was one of the first things I watched after I subscribed to Netflix which it is still on and you can still watch it's been on the whole time and I remember laughing at this movie and thinking it was silly and because there are full on song and dance numbers going on in this movie it is a superhero movie but there are times where they turn around and just start singing and the whole town starts dancing behind the guy and when I first watched it, I was like, this is a pretty silly movie. I went back and watched it again, and I was surprised at how good the movie really was. This movie is pretty much a kung fu movie. The main character of this movie's name is Bruce Lee. <laughs> so, <laughs> he's a student at a school for kung fu. His master is the master with the strange past, and he, you know, it's a pretty stereotypical kung fu movie. And then he, like, has his seamstress grandfather uh seamstress that's not the right word taylor taylor yeah make a superhero outfit so he can do kung fu and fight crime to impress the girl and essentially seek some vengeance but no spoilers it actually turns into a pretty good action flick with sweet kung fu fighting and superhero costumes and there's song and dance numbers as previously mentioned there's a lot of funny moments like just to stop the action for a minute and laugh for a bit the big complaint that i could really give for this movie is it's both in english and not in english so they break it up really strangely to points where Parts of the movie are one sentence is subtitled, the next sentence is in English, the response to that sentence is subtitled, and then they finish the response in English. It's very fragmented by doing that. And on Netflix, they don't subtitle the English parts, so I would almost rather them just subtitle all of it. Other than that, I enjoy this movie very much, and I'm giving it a B. We all gave them Bs this time. Nice. Perfect, right in a row. Yeah, so I, I'd say what? It's kind of like all three of them are sort of good for... You're just looking for something different to watch and you don't want to be like sorely disappointed. Oh, yeah. When you look at the cover of Mugamudi, you think, what the hell kind of dumb movie is this? <laughs> but if you like go into it and watch it, like... <laughs> It's a pretty good movie. Pleasantly surprised, I think, both times that I watched it, just for 
different reasons or I wouldn't have gone back and watched it for this review. I probably would have picked another movie. I must have been at least pleasantly surprised in some aspect the first time I watched it because I remembered it after many, 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 many years. That is our quick movie reviews for D-list superheroes. Read all the things, watch all the things, and good luck on your dice rolls and go check out Lindorm Dice. Thank you for choosing to get geeky with Kiki today. You can support us and help us get noticed with just a few simple clicks. Following us on Spotify, iTunes, Instagram, and Twitter. Our intro and outro music was created by Adam Sloan of Exoset. You can find all of Adam's work on Bandcamp and Spotify, including his bands Zagreus, Dead Man's Trigger, and End Time Illusion. 